Jimmy K here, Metal Voice. Look at this. The Metal Voice shirts are now on sale. Just go to the video description to find out on how you can purchase one. Metal! Welcome to the Metal Voice. Alan, not one, but two. Oh, oh the dynamic <laughs> duo themselves from the Dead Daisies. We got Doug Aldridge and Glenn Hughes. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Hi, guys. Here hey, we are. Great to have you guys. Holy Ground, The Dead Daisies on SPV, January 22nd, 2021, the new album. Very excited. Alan, oh, thank man, you. I have not been able to stop listening to it since uh, the copy came out here. It's it's, uh, it seems to me like it's a completely different beast now that Glenn's in the band. <laughs> I don't know if you agree, Doug. It's absolutely. It's a brand new day, man. It's, uh, you know, we're very very happy to, to have glenn leading this ship and it's like a revolution for the band i mean it, it's it's still the dead daisies but it's a brand new start we're very excited yeah, yeah it's, you know, uh, oh, sorry, a new it's it, it, no, it's, it's a new, another chapter in my life you know so it was a good a, a experience for me to come into this doug's an old friend and a love dog and it's a, it's a great great ship we're flying here I remember years ago driving through New England and I see, you know, Glenn, Glenn Hughes is performing and, and who's his guitar player, Doug. So how yeah. far back does your relationship go? <laughs> well, oh, we go, back, way for, we go back a lot further, right, right G? So, you know, 25 years and, you know, Doug played with my, in my band about five years ago. Uh, it was fantastic. And, and back then we talked about, doing more work. We didn't know it was going to be in the dead daisies, but here we are doing just that. And, uh, you know, listening to the opening, just the opening track alone, a holy ground. I mean, you can tell it's a new band, uh, you know, new statement. So. Hmm. Well, we, we, um, you know, it is it, like, like Glenn said, it's a new chapter for him. It's a new chapter for the dead daisies. It it's, um, mm. you know, it's, it started as kind of a roundabout. There's been several lineup changes. This is very, it's funny because it's it's not so far away from Deep Purple in some ways that you know there were different eras of Deep Purple when mm -hmm. when Glenn and David joined that was a, a very important big change for the band and um and it was a, to me it was a, a a great new start for that band so this is a new start this is chapter this is uh this is um we call it uh, version four of the dead days. <laughs> Mark, yeah. four, Mark four, <laughs> Mark four. Mark yeah. four, yeah. I want to know, okay, I love Karabi and I love the dead days with Karabi, but what's the difference, if there was a difference between Glenn, the sound that you're having with Glenn versus the sound you had with, <clears throat> with John Karabi? It's it's definitely, I mean, listen, we love John Glenn and, and I are dear friends with John and, and we had, we're very happy for him, what he's doing. Um, but basically, um, it's it's a great change um, because we're not trying to replace John. We, we're going in a fresh direction, and Glenn basically brings a uh, a, a grooviness to the band and a, a, a heaviness to the band that um, that maybe was we didn't have that like like that before with John. We had a, a little a different thing, you know. Um, they're like apples and oranges in terms of of what musicality styles um uh, maybe glenn could express how he feels but i, uh, he, I feel he, like it's, it's groovy yeah i mean it would would have been silly to to repeat the same formula you know uh, john and marco are very close friends of mine and, and i was brought into this band to change the game if you will and to to make it just a a, a different vibe uh well, with the same kind of classic rock movement, uh, the same generational values where classic rock is. Uh, I don't like the word classic rock or any terminology for rock music. It's just music that we feel is appropriate for this time, uh, you know, and, you know, those songs were written before a pandemic and, you know, they speak to a lot of people. And so for me to join this band was a, a beautiful moment for me because I wanted to express myself musically in this band and I was allowed to do that. So we're pressing forward. We're not looking so far back anymore. We're in the moment. Uh, we're pressing all the right groovy moments. I think we're just getting on with life. 
Oh, and you've been quite busy yourself, Glenn. I mean, looking back, you had the Black Country Communion, then California Breed, then Voodoo mm-hmm. Hill, which was made our top ten list years ago. Thank you. And uh, and now uh, now with the Dead Daisy. So, are, are you a restless soul, or you're like the Energizer Bunny? You you can't keep still. You got to keep. Well, moving. no, um, I I'm both of them actually. <laughs> um, I I am a workaholic. I I, I do like to work. I, I'm a dog knows I'm a songwriter. That's the source of everything for me is the songs. I mean, I'm all, I'm all about songs. I just love songwriting. And to express myself as a songwriter in this band is great because we're all, we, we spend a lot of time together, not lately, but you know, last November <laughs> in, in December, we, we, we made the album in, in France, as you know, and uh, we lived together and we ate together and we laughed together and we rocked together. And it was a great moment. So you can hear on the album that it's a great, great blend of musicians, you know, uh, all bringing the love to the table. Uh, and I'm glad we, we captured Holy Ground uh, in that moment of time before we, we were hit with this awful virus. And, and again, you know, you, you, you bring your own style of bass playing, which is really evident on songs like, like No Other, right? Uh, yeah. And a bass solo in there. But what, what's the, how do you find the synergy with Dean as a rhythm section playing with Dean? Oh, he's great. Uh, he's a, he's a, as you know, Dean's, because I've I played with both Bonhams, you know, and coming into with Dean, Dean is a percussive player, real percussive, uh, uh, rock drummer, but real percussive and different flavor for me. So I was hoping we could be very, very simple in our approach and keep it simple. So that's what we did. You know, I, I, got, I, I, I got to say, Alan, to me, like Doug, the heaviness, this drop down heaviness, it's like a wall of guitar sound, Doug. I mean, just talk uh, about that. Well, it is, it's, a, it's a different sound than what we have. We have a new producer, Ben Gross. He, 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 was, really, um, he was really exciting to work with. He brought a lot. He, you know, the, the sound comes from your fingers, but, but it helps when you got good gear, too. And he had... Uh, right a couple of amps that he liked and I had a couple, but the heaviness of this album, I think heavy. more from Glenn. Because <laughs> it's Glenn's, heavy. Bass, Glenn, Glenn's bass tone, Glenn's bass should have a, have a it should be its own country. Yeah. It's so <laughs> you know, and I love it, man. I, but I, it's I, not I, a distorted heaviness. You know what I'm saying? It's not a distorted, yeah. it's it's a, a, a more of a vibe of a heaviness. It's it's a, a wall of sound, I guess. Massive. Well, it's massive. a it's a it's a wiry bass sound. It, it's a sound I've always had, but more so now since Black Country Community, I've, I've amped it up more gritty. It's it's really. I I come from the early seventies, you know, you know, Chris Squire, Hank Whistle, myself, that kind of very wiry sound and that's evident on the dead daisies album so i'm really happy to to be part of that i gotta tell you guys the thing that glenn said when ben was mixing the record and we didn't know exactly you know ben's a very old school producer and he he wouldn't play us the mixes how it was shaping up or anything he would just he would we would just do our work but he said so what do you guys think for the mixes and you know usually guys will go like well on this song i want you to do this and this song i want you to do that and glenn just goes just make sure you can hear everything i played that's it <laughs> Simple. Well, you know if, for me it's like uh, you know it's a, it's the notes i don't play are as important as the notes i play i like that space in the in the groove you know i don't come from the the, the style of bass playing or hammer-ons and all that stuff it's not bass playing for me but bass playing for me is less is more in, in fact I, I do like to rage as you know i like i like no other that solo <laughs> which is in great spontaneous but for me, it's all about the big holes in the music. It's, it's very important to have those holes. It, it goes back to, for me, the word that there's Doug used previously, it's, it's you're, you have a groove. There's a groove yeah. to your playing. <laughs> yeah. That's what I take away. Yeah. And again, you know, listening back to the Karabi versions, you know, you got that Aussie pub feel, more straight ahead rock and roll. And this yeah. one seems a little darker, a little bit more introspective. I mean, the song My Fate, to go back to Jimmy's point about darker, that could have been off of the depth sessions with Iomi as far yeah, as I'm concerned. Yeah, it, it, it was definitely, you know, as you know, Tony's one of my best friends and I got part of him inside of me. We're so close. <laughs> I, I just thought, I, I played that song to Doug early on when we were, before we made the album. I said, do you think this is going to 
it's very heavy. Uh, it's probably the heaviest riff that Dave's ever done. So I'm glad the band, you know, again, you know, I wrote, hopefully they would like some other stuff I've written. And this was a song <laughs> I thought, you know, they, they, they thought it was dark and interesting. And, and I'm, glad it, I'm glad it made it on the album. To me, Alan and everybody, Far Away is the epic track. Doug, Far Away is, it's, I'm happy you saved it for last because that is the track off the album for me. Yeah, it's, it's a very special track that Glenn brought. He, Glenn wrote that in London and uh, it was, he played me, I'll let him tell you, but he played me the basic aspects he had and he had everything there. It was all, all the parts were there. It was just a matter of, of capturing it which uh, mm -hmm. is challenging, but we got it, you know? And then yeah. when we got it, when, when we got Dino's track, I went in and put a guitar on it to make sure that it was, you know, that, that we were happy with the ups and downs. Cause that's, that track breathes, it, it totally lives, you know? But Glenn, it's, you tell um, I, I did my last Glenn Hughes solo performance in the UK, November 29th of 019. And I had to fly back to Paris the next day to meet the guys to start, on session number two. And I couldn't sleep uh, in Birmingham after the show and I had a, a guitar with me and I just thought I'm gonna come up with something different, uh, a, a slower song. And by the time I made the plane, I, I got the music done and I didn't really have a title. Uh, and when I got to La Fabrique, I asked Doug if he'd come to my room and I played it to him alone. And I, if I could say this to you, I think Doug really, really heard what I was doing. And uh, then, you know, we got, we, we played around with it. Then I called David and Dean to come up to my room and then we sort of, we fell in love with it. So I went and finished the song. I did the lyrics and there you have it. And it's a song about coming home. Uh, it's a song about, again, being at sea and coming back uh, years later and, 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 and here I am. I'm so you, glad we. I'm so glad you love that song. We love it too. Yeah. It's a great I, again, song. what I like about the Dead Daisies, you got those three minute forty five rock songs. Right? Nobody does that anymore. Keep it simple. Move on to the next, and then you get you're <laughs> going to end with this epic seven minute track, which you know you're singing about waterfalls, and you had a Voodoo Hill album called Waterfalls. So right. is this is this the Glenn Hughes thing? Is Waterfalls like Rainbows was Ronnie James Dio thing? You know. You know, I, 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 I great. No one's touched on this before. Good I'm job, glad, Alan. Good job. Uh, you know, but I'm glad. I'm glad you touched on it. If you listen to my work, even 50 years ago, I was singing about the sea, the ocean, on the shore. You know, like Medusa. You know, on the shore. I was always on the shore, and I live. I live on the ocean here in LA. So it's like I'm always singing about the sea. It's enchanting to me. So I thought this, you know, the waterfall, I can't go back to the shore. It's like, it's typical Glenn stuff. So I'm tongue in cheek, but it's what I write about. Well, right. speaking of that, here's Walking on Water, my first introduction to Glenn Hughes yeah, back on that. the ever famous From <laughs> Now look On. That. Look that at that. What is that? That's a Glenn cassette Hughes. or is that an A-track? That's a cassette. Can you believe it? <laughs> it's a cassette. I used to look at it. 1993. How funny. Look at that. Um, but again, walking on water it goes back to what you were saying. The, so the lyrics. Okay. I mean, it, we can get a lot of description on this album, but who took care of most of the lyrics? Is it just everybody <clears throat> contributing? Is that how it worked, Doug? No, Glenn, no, Glenn's, Glenn does all the, the lyrics. It, it's, yeah, uh, I, I'm a, yeah, I'm a, lyric, I'm a lyricist. Um, I, you know, especially on this particular album, it, it's, um, it, it's a song, all these songs are about the human condition. I don't write about fiction. And again, I, I sing about overcoming fear, uh, letting go into transformation. And waterfalls. And, and waterfalls. There's <laughs> as, as always going to be some water in my song. But <laughs> again, I, I'm not afraid to write what I'm feeling because I think in general, people will go through what I'm singing about and writing about because it's all about the human condition. Um, and again, written before the pandemic. And if you listen to some of those songs, it's like, it's wow, really? You didn't know anything about it? I mean, you know, a lot of people are probably writing the same thing about they're writing songs before the pandemic and they listen to their songs. I'm going, wow, what a coincidence, you know? 
Do you guys have another album ready to go since we have, we're stuck in this pandemic or writing music continuously? I mean, okay, yeah, one we'll album's be- out, another album's getting ready. I mean, let's yeah, the- finish this renovations first. <laughs> we, 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 made a, we made a good start. Yeah, we got, yeah, we got, yeah, st- we got, it's, it's, it, we got stuff cooking. It's, it's that's what I'm cooking. saying. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's pretty much what everybody's doing now, cooking. Yeah, we, we're cooking and, it. And Doug, for yourself, I mean, you got two thirds of Revolution Saints, another album, Rise, that made our top ten list in 2020. By the way, uh, so how do you get your mind into writing music? Like, if you're going from one band to another? Well, actually, I didn't really write that much for Revolution Saints on the last record. I, I, I put in a little bit of work on it, but it was kind of a that's been a project. That's not been a band situation, to be honest with you. And and I think it's pretty much complete at this point because I I really just for the past two years been focused on this change that we were, that we were going to make. And once I found out that Glenn was coming in, the management said, you know, talking to Glenn Hughes, I was like, what? That would be amazing. <laughs> and and so I I immediately was like, I started. Well, they said Glenn wants to talk to you, so I called Glenn, and Glenn goes, it's time. It's time for us to do some yeah. stuff together. So I was like, killer. So he started working on stuff and I started working on some things that I thought he would like, because I, I mean, I pre- wanted to present some music that um, that would inspire Glenn, that we were gonna do this together. So um, it just gave me an opportunity to, I, I focused directly on on what Glenn was gonna do with the Dead Daisies mm-hmm. and, and um, presented as much as I could to be helpful. And then I also knew that Glenn had ideas, had a bunch of, not ideas, he had a bunch of songs, a bunch of music that he wanted to present to the mm. band. And I, I wanted to be helpful to him. So I made myself available to help him present great. his ideas. It was, yeah. it was, it, Doug came over to my house. Oh my God, it must have been seven or eight times. Uh, and I, I, I demoed stuff with Doug here and and you know that's really how it got going uh he was very very helpful to me very kind considerate loving as he's a lovely lovely man and he came over and really brought me into this thing and i was able to just be me again writing for the dead days i'm not writing for glenn i'm writing for what i consider to be the next level of songs for the dead days and i think we've done a great job on holy ground Definitely. We're really excited about it. We want, you know, we hope people enjoy it as much as we enjoyed making it. We had a blast. I mean, we were so focused. And I think that really shows on the album. That it's like, it's not like a bunch of songs chucked together. It's really a whole vibe and movement. And it, it covers a lot. You know, you know what I noticed getting ready for this interview? I go, man, these guys have connections. I mean, the the Coverdale connection, the Dio connection. There's just so many. It's like you guys are a family before you were a family, right? There's just so much history, right? I mean, Doug, you play with Dio. You opened up for, I mean, Dio opened up for uh, for Deep Purple back in the day. Coverdale, you, Glenn's got Coverdale. You've been with Coverdale. There's just so many. You guys are a family. Like it's, all under, it's all under the it's all under the, the umbrella of Mr. Richie Blackmore. We're a family <laughs> underneath Richie. <laughs> Isn't that bizarre? Oh, yeah, oh, Richie's he offspring. Is. <laughs> <laughs> no, but people, people ask me, well, yeah, I, I mean I didn't mean to say anything wrong, but basically I'm we love I'm Richie. a fan of I'm a love fan him. of Richie, but um but uh I wanted to say this. People ask me like, hey, what is it how did you get so lucky to work with the greatest heavy metal singer of all time, the greatest blues rock singer of all time, and the voice of rock, the greatest all around <laughs> Glenn Hughes? It's like, how how lucky have I been? What did I do to deserve this? You know, um, in talent? a good way. <laughs> talent, I guess. You know, you, you, you've got the chops. Maybe that's why. No, it's, I don't know. It's, it's, no it's luck. I mean, I it's, it's, it's luck, but also being friends with, like, meeting Glenn and being friends with him. He knew um we had jammed a couple times in little situations um one was in italy it was really yeah. fun yeah yeah and we were together at ronnie's funeral and um and we just you know have a, a mutual respect for each other and when he called and said yes. hey, i'm doing this tour my guitar player soren's busy and i need somebody i can trust and would you want to go and i at that time had been home off the road for a while and was like i'm ready let's go right. you know we, and we had some epic gigs, man, epic jams. And I'm so excited about doing these songs with Glenn 
from Holy Ground because I know that we're going to raise the, the level of these songs even more so by playing them live. Yeah. We've, we've, we've run out with these songs. We did a rehearsal in October and we played these songs live and they smoke live. They really, really do really kick in. And um, it's going to be a great show you whenever guys do, we can get out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys do a lot of covers. Are you guys going to throw in, I don't know, maybe a few deal songs, a few... Uh, no, no, no. I think we... I don't think this so. Is, this is, again, a fresh start for the band. It, it means we need to we need to re look at everything and, re, and revamp everything. And we, we do have a cover on the album that was um, suggested we, tr you know, do for fun. We did it and it turned out cool. But I mean, maybe maybe we throw a, a, a deep I, I song of Glenn's guys, in there. Someday. I don't think there's going to be a lot of covers going forward. Um, I think the Dead Daisies were a cover band and that is now going to change because there's so many songs been written and being written as we speak. Uh, I just think the Daisies were a little short on material before. And, and now, you know, I just think it's time to press the boat out and, and you know, this, this band is, is a killer band. Live streams? I mean, can't wait to see you live. So is there, I mean, nobody's got a timetable, but uh, I would assume that a tour, when, when everything gets back to semi-normal here, there was, was a tour. Well, I can, so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on the edge and say this to you. I have seen some penciled in shows for Canada. Hey, there we yes, go. Yes, I have. <laughs> but, you know, I, I can't say when, but I've seen a Canadian run and mm. I, I can't say if I say any more than that. Tell us if Montreal's on that pencil in just well, between us, it, just between I, us. I, I can, I can say that this, there are shows on the calendar okay. uh, later on in the year. So it's hopefully it'll be okay. People understand, people understand it's a pandemic. It might get postponed. People get it. <laughs> you know, people are but very you know understanding. I am looking forward to come. I played a show in Canada a couple of years ago and I've been there forever. Yeah. And it was such a great show, and I can't wait to get back there. All right, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, any other plans uh, you guys are doing? Is there any other projects you're working on, Glenn, other than this? No, no, no this is it for me. Calling up Tony I, I, Iommi, Tony, let's do something. No, well, there's, there's, there's always someone going on with Tony. We've done three albums, and, and you never know, and there's a possibility there'll be another one. But at the time, at this time, it's so hard to say anything because I'm just doing everything I can to make sure the dead days is get to as many people as humanly possible. Well, Glenn, you've done a phenomenal job at bringing it to the next Thank level. You. And Doug, Thank you how so about much. you, Doug? Are you, is there any other projects you're working on you want to promote? No, I'm, I'm just promote. I'm just sticking to this for the moment. I want to keep it simple. One of my, um, my resolutions of this 21 is to, is to be more focused. And um, I think, you know, we've all, gone through musical we've all got a musical past that covers a lot of ground and everything but i mean i really starting when i was in dio and white snake and now with the dead days is it really i function better when i focus on one thing at a time and right and not not right. spreading myself too thin i'm i'm really excited about this lineup with glenn and i can't wait for you guys to hear it live that's yeah. that's the whole thing so for all your all your your uh viewers and and everything please uh Want to, we want to send you guys a happy new year all yeah. the very best for 21 all right so that's i got January. glenn's autobiography hey, and, you know, now we is. got the name of doug's if doug ever wants the right one it's the luckiest guy in the world <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah but absolutely just, uh, just to go back to your book glenn i mean you know a song like 30 days in the hole which you know a new castle brown smack you down any any yes. ambiguity and with your soberness and singing these lyrics like that you know steve Murray was on a, a close friend of mine and um you know steve w <sighs> Look, I love Steve Marriott. I mean, I genuinely love him and his family and um, a dear friend and I miss him. And he's such an incredible songwriter, performer, singer. So for me to sing a song that he sung, I wanted to change, change it up a little. I don't know if you heard the acoustic version, it's a little different, but you know, to sing anything that Steve sang, you have to be very reverent because he was incredible. Uh, singing about booze doesn't make me feel great. I haven't had a drink in a long time. I'm not <laughs> going to drink again, not today at least. But no, all those years ago, it was wasn't never it never worked for me drinking. So as you can see, I'm 
a much better man sober. <laughs> but much more productive, I might add. I, wow. um, I imagine so. <laughs> All right, guys, that is the Dead Daisies, hey, January 22nd, Holy Ground. Go pick it up. Go pick it up. Go pick it up. And thank you, guys. Thank We've you so much. You're welcome. Again, you know, one of my favorite all-time interviews, the favorite all-time interviews with Doug and Dean years ago when they were here oh, at the great. Dead Daisies. And we were great. blessed to have you guys here today. You were stretching us. apart the shirt, the Metal Boy shirt. And uh, <laughs> if you remember, do you remember that? You guys were ripping it apart. Yes, yes, yes. It was, it was a good time. So it was funny. Fun hey, times. you guys, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you kindly. Uh, we'll see you. We'll see you this year, but guys. Thank you Montreal, so much. Montreal. Okay, yeah, and later. everybody, we love you. We love you. I, I can't wait to come back to Canada. I love you all. Thank all right. you. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Thanks again. Thank Thanks, you. Man. Thank Bye. you. Thank you so much. Peace and love. Thanks.